This is the lock screen for the POS. You'll notice on the right, under the keypad, is the 21 by date. If someone was born on this day, today is their 21st birthday. This is to help you if you're serving alcohol and speed up checking IDs. Before you can take an order, you need to unlock the system with your PIN number. All activity performed on the station is now logged under your account. If you step away from the tablet, you must remember to tap the logout button in the top left. Otherwise, if another server comes up to this station, they will be using your account, and you don't want to be responsible for whatever they're doing. The default screen after entering your PIN is the new order screen. On the left is where you build your orders, and on the right is the menu area with all the products that you can add to an order. At the top of the order builder is the order type button. This demo account is based on a restaurant that has many service types, but this video will focus on what a server will be doing working tables. In this case, we're going to use the table order type, which is already set to the default. To start an order, you'll tap the layout button and choose a table from the on-screen floor plan. You'll notice that it is highlighted in gold and in the bottom left corner of the screen, it shows the table name. Select all the tables that the party is seated at. Then tap the Select Tables button on the bottom right to save the tables to the order. If you are prompted to enter the party size, do that now. You can now start taking the guest's order. You will notice that seats have been added to the order. The number of seats is determined by the party size that you selected. You can also tap the plus sign to add additional seats if you need to. To order by seat, tap the seat number and add products to the order. Sometimes items are shared at the table. Add shared items under the shared order at the top. Don't worry, we'll show you how to custom split shared items later in the video. Let's add some products to this order. On the right, along the bottom, you'll see all the main menu buttons that have been set up by your manager. Above those buttons, you will see the tiles for products and submenus. Let's say our guests want a shared appetizer. We select the shared order on the right. On the left, we tap the sides menu at the bottom and then select jalapeno poppers. On this screen, we can see the modifiers for the product. Required modifiers are indicated with a red dot. You cannot add a product unless we have selected all of the required modifiers. We get an error and the buttons shake to get our attention. Once you have made the required selections, tap finish to add the product to the shared order. In the order builder, we can now see some additional information. We have the product name, the quantity, the unit price, and the amount. The amount is the unit price times the quantity. And below the product name, we can see all the selected modifiers. Let's add the rest of the order for each seat. Tap seat one. Add the entree. And the drink. Tap seat two. Add the entree and the drink and continue for seat three. Now, what happens if we need to move a product from one seat to another? Simply tap and hold the product and drag it to the seat you want. What happens if our guests change their mind about something they've ordered or we've made a mistake? No problem, just tap the item in the order to edit it. We can change any of the selected modifiers we can change the course, we can change the seat, and add special notes for the product that will be sent to the kitchen. We can adjust the quantity, or we can delete the product from the order. We can add a product discount or comp to the order as well. When we're done with our product, tap the back button to return to the menu. Okay, so we've taken our first order, but the items have not yet been sent to the kitchen. 
If we look at the send button, we can see a red dot indicating the number of unsent items in the order. You'll tap send when you're ready to send those items to the kitchen. But there are more things that you can do with this order. We can see them if we tap the more button in the bottom left corner of the screen. Some of the additional functions a server might need are set or change the party size, add gratuity, add order notes to the kitchen, which are different than the product notes, cancel an order, transfer our order to another server, merge two tickets, split a single order, into two separate orders. Resend items to the kitchen. Send items by course. This will only send the items in the selected course to the kitchen. And you can add a gift card or check the balance of a gift card. Tap back in the top left corner to exit the more screen. When you're done taking the order, and you're ready to move to the next table, you'll tap the hold button. Take note, the hold button does not send the items in the ticket to the kitchen. Only the send button does that. There is no timer or auto send function. You are in complete control of sending items to the kitchen at the right time. Tap send, then hold. As a server doing table service, you're asked to manage multiple tables at once. Rescue POS makes that easy. When you tap orders in the top corner of the screen, you'll see all of today's orders and their status. This is tile view. You can also change it to list view. But for servers working tables, you're probably going to use the table view the most. You can see from the table view that there are tables that are highlighted. Tables with open orders are green. Tables with orders awaiting tip are orange. To open an existing order, Tap the table. You can now add additional items to the order and send them to the kitchen. When your guest is nearing the end of their meal, they'll want you to bring them their check. To do this, open their order and tap the checkout button. In most cases, the itemized check will print automatically to the assigned printer. If your manager has turned this off, you'll need to tap the reprint button to get the check. Before you start payment, ask your guests if they'll be splitting their check. Rescue has a few options for splitting checks. The first is Easy Split. This splits the check by dollar amount. To add a split, tap the Add button. To change the amount of a split, tap the C button to clear and enter the dollar amount on the keypad. To delete a split, tap the Delete button above the keypad. To pay a split, Tap the Pay button above the keypad. The next option is to split a check by item. You can see that each seat is now a split in the order. Tap the Add button to add a check. Tap the X in the top corner of the ticket to remove a split. To move items between checks, tap the item. Then tap the check you want to move it to. A custom split of a shared item is easy. Tap the product, then the custom split button. Select the checks to split the item across. To pay a split, tap the pay button at the bottom. Another way to split a check is by seat. The check is split by seat, but it's simplified for speed. You cannot move items between checks or add additional splits from this screen. In this example, our guests do not require a split. So let's go through the three most common ways your guests will pay. Cash, credit card, and gift card. A quick note about payment. There are a few ways that your restaurant might take payments, but the principles remain the same. It's important to understand that an order can be shared on any of the POS tablets. So if you need to cash out customers at a specific station, for example, one with a cash drawer, just make sure the order is not currently open at any other station, or you'll see a lock on the order indicating it's already being accessed. For a cash payment, tap cash. 
Enter the cash tendered by your guest on the keypad. Use C to clear or the arrow to backspace if you make a mistake. Tap cash to accept and the drawer will pop open. On the screen, it'll show you the guest's change. Tap cash to complete the transaction. To pay with a credit card, you may not have to tap the button that says credit card. Most of our current card readers do not show the button. As soon as you're on the checkout screen, you can insert the guest's card, speeding up payment. Or you'll tap the credit card button to initiate payment. Depending on your system settings, the guest will see on-screen prompts to complete the transaction, or they will need to sign a printed credit authorization slip. To use a gift card for payment, tap the gift card payment button. You can swipe the gift card on your card reader, or you can key in the gift card number from the back of the card. After completing a credit card or gift card payment not done with on-screen authorization, you will need to manually enter the tip to complete the transaction. To do this, tap the Orders button. You'll see the order status is Awaiting Patron Signature or that the table is orange. Tap the table. Tap Enter Tip to enter the tip. The order is now settled. There are a few things that you can do with a settled order. Tap a settled order. Print allows you to reprint their receipt. Transactions allows you to change the tip or issue a refund. A quick note about refunds. You can only issue a refund for a credit card payment after the tip has been entered. If the status still says awaiting patron signature, you cannot refund it just yet. Enter a zero tip, and once it's settled, you can issue the refund. You can change the tip afterwards if you need to. In the refund window, you can give a full refund for the order, give a custom refund for the order, or refund by item. Make sure to provide a reason for the refund. We also have the option to reopen an order, but you want to be very careful about this. In most cases, you're better off issuing a refund and or canceling the order and making a new order instead. That said, you can reopen a ticket. And from here, you can add and remove items from the order. Be aware if the order total doesn't match the payment that has already been made. An overpayment will prevent you from settling the order. An underpayment will require the guest to pay the balance to settle the order. You can void a payment, but if you void a card payment after the customer has left, there will be no way to recover the funds. The most common use of reopening an order is when a server is working multiple tables, returns to the POS station, and has mixed up the orders. This is a quick way to void the incorrect card payment from an order and rerun the correct payment card. In this video, we covered the most common duties of a server providing table service using Rescue POS, including how to take an order, how to switch between tables, how to split checks, how to enter tips, and how to issue a refund. Thank you for watching.